This is Audible. Tantor Audio, a division of recorded books, presents From This Day Forward by Lauren Lane, narrated by Vanessa Daniels. Chapter 1 If Leah McHale had learned anything in her decade as a wedding photographer, it was that Sunday mornings were meant for sleeping in. This was especially true when last night's wedding had involved the bridal party taking tequila shots and insisting they'd pay her extra for photographing the drunken train wreck until 3 a.m. In other words, Sunday brunch was rarely an option for Leah. Today, however, Leah made an exception. Because when a friend, who also happened to be owner of the most elite wedding planning company in Manhattan, asked you to meet her at a trendy West Village hotspot at 11.30 on a Sunday morning, you didn't say no. Alexis Morgan was already seated at the restaurant when Leah arrived, which came as zero surprise, since the wedding planner thought being late should count among the deadly sins, nestled right alongside Sloth. Leah smiled in thanks as the hostess pointed out Alexis's table on the patio and wound her way through the crowded mess of sidewalk tables until she reached her friend. Alexis was writing something in her ever-present day planner, but the second she saw Leah, she gave one of her small, trademark, I-have-a-secret smiles, shutting the planner before standing for a hug. Leah, you look lovely. Um, stop, Leah said, giving the smaller woman a squeeze. I'm not one of your brides to be pampered and fluffed. You can tell me the truth. I look tired, and I've gained seven pounds since we last hung out. Nonsense. Alexis fluttered her napkin to her lap as they both sat down. I never know which one I'm more jealous of, that gorgeous red hair or those curves. Yeah, well, Leah patted her padded hip. The curves are real. The hair, not so much. Really? Alexis said in surprise leaning forward and studying Leah's hairline curiously. That's not your real color? Leah shrugged and took a sip of her water. It used to be. I was one of those girls that the other kids called Carrot Top on the playground, but somewhere in my twenties, the bright orange decided it wanted to be more of a muddy copper. So let's just say I, um, enhance it. No judgment here. Alexis lifted a pink manicured finger to her own shiny dark hair. These roots aren't my own either. Prematurely gray, even though I'm 33. Tell anyone I cut you. Leah let out a surprised laugh. Alexis Morgan had always reminded Leah of a badass Audrey Hepburn. She had the same slight figure and wide brown eyes as the iconic Hollywood starlet. But whereas there'd be a sweetness to Audrey, Alexis was... fierce. Kind. Definitely. Loyal, for sure. But if Audrey Hepburn was the type to soothe you during the teary phase of a bad breakup, Alexis was the quiet revenge friend, the one you called when you needed a kick in the pants to get your life back on track. Mimosa's your day drink of choice, right? Alexis asked, motioning a server over with a subtle lifting of her hand. The waiter was by their table in seconds. Mimosa for my friend, and I'll take a Bloody Mary, heavy on the horseradish, Alexis said. For some reason, it always catches me off guard that you're a vodka in the morning type of girl, Leah said after the waiter had walked away. Alexis lifted a slim shoulder. Let's just say I get more than enough champagne during the workday. It's nice to take a break. Leah patted her friend's hand. It's a rough life, dear. All that veuve clicquot you're forced to sip with your clients. Alexis tilted her head, her long brown ponytail draping over a slim shoulder. Surely you get the occasional glass of bubbly yourself. Leah shrugged. It's often offered, but I don't like the view on the other end of the lens getting blurry. Alexis nodded. Rumor has it you've been busy lately. Leah cracked her neck and wished she'd had just one more cup of coffee before this brunch. Aren't we all? I keep thinking that one of these years the June bride thing will go out of style, but nope. I'm already booked three Junes out. What is that? Tradition, combined with you being one of the best photographers in the city, Alexis said as the server placed their drinks in front of them. Uh-oh, you're busting out the trademark Morgan Flattery, Leah teased. Whatever you called me here for must be big. 
Alexis used her straw to stir her drink before lifting wide brown eyes to Leah's. The Kowlowski shrapner wedding you were working next weekend was called off. Leah's eyes narrowed. True. Turns out the bride and the best man had a thing. But how do you know that? I thought wedding bells passed on that one. The wedding bells was Alexis Morgan's wedding planning company. Although company was perhaps an inadequate term. It was more like an empire, and one that Leah was darn grateful to be connected with. She had enough faith in her skills to know she could support herself either way, but it definitely didn't hurt to be one of Alexis Morgan's go-to photographers. Not only did it mean more weddings, it meant big weddings. And big money. We did turn it down, Alexis confirmed, taking a sip of her drink. I didn't have a good feeling. And it's a good thing, too, because we ended up booking the Preston wedding for that same weekend. Leah shook her head. Only you could look so perfectly chill about the fact that you've been planning the president's daughter's wedding. Former president. Details, shmeetails, Leah said with a wave of her hand. It was true. The bride wouldn't technically be the first daughter on her wedding day. But President Preston had ended his second term just within the past year. So in the eyes of the press, Kylie Preston was still very much America's sweetheart. What's Kylie like anyway? Leah asked. She always seems so sweet and shy on camera. She's sweet and shy in real life too, although the shyness fades when she's around Brent. Leah shook her head. Wouldn't you just figure that the president's daughter and the son of the richest man in New York would become college sweethearts? An uncharacteristically dreamy look stole over Alexis's eyes. It works that way sometimes. Leah's snort slipped out before she could help it. It wasn't that she didn't believe in true love. She totally did. One didn't make it to age 31 as a wedding photographer without trusting that at least some of the couples would make it to happily ever after. It was just that it never seemed to work that way for her. Despite the fact that Leah continued to put herself out there, trying every sort of wretched dating app on the planet, and gamely agreeing to every blind date her friends could rummage up, she had yet to feel the thing. That elusive combination of wanting to see someone naked and wanting to wake up beside him the next morning. For Leah, it was usually one or the other. Either she met exactly the type of guy she could laugh with and didn't feel even a flash of attraction for, or there was a guy who completely revved her lady bits, but with whom she had nothing in common. Except, that wasn't entirely true. The emotional and physical attraction had overlapped once, but the disastrous consequences of that short-lived fling had been painful enough that she was, well, skeptical. Do you have any plans for your unexpectedly free weekend? Alexis asked as she perused the menu. Leah's eyes narrowed on her friend. Alexis Morgan might be the queen of poker face, but Leah had known Alexis for close to a decade now. She knew when she was being handled, and right now, Alexis was definitely working up to something. Instead of answering the question, Leah took a sip of her mimosa and waited. When Alexis's brown eyes flicked up to hers, Leah merely lifted her brows, waited some more. With a sigh, Alexis set the menu aside and folded both arms on the table, leaning toward Leah. I need a favor. Anything, Leah said automatically, meaning it completely. Her relationship with Alexis may have started as a business arrangement. They'd both arrived in the city ten years earlier, with big plans of pursuing their dream careers. But somewhere along the way, Alexis and Leah had transitioned from sometimes business associates to friends. Alexis had been there for Leah when she needed her, and Leah fully intended to repay the favor in any way she could. I need you to work the Preston wedding. Leah blinked. The Preston wedding? As in, the wedding of the former first daughter we were just talking about? The one this weekend? Alexis nodded. Leah sat back, stunned. Holy crap, Lex. That's not really doing me a favor, hun. More like the other way around. This would be the opportunity of a lifetime for me, for any photographer. I know, but I still hate asking last minute like this. If it were up to me, I'd have recommended you from the very beginning. But Kylie's college roommate and her husband are a two-person photographer team. 
and Kylie wanted to give the opportunity to her friend. So what happened? They had a falling out? Alexis shook her head. They live in San Francisco, and she's a few months pregnant. There was some complication. She's been put on bed rest. Nothing serious, just a precaution. But ergo, she's certainly not going to be flying to New York anytime soon, and certainly can't be photographing a wedding. Ugh, oh, that sucks, Leah said sympathetically. Alexis smiled. This is why I knew you were right for the job. You get it. You get people. Leah rolled her eyes. You hardly have to sweet-talk me into taking a job that's likely to be the highest-profile wedding of my career. Alexis glanced down at her Bloody Mary, stirring a pickled green bean. Well, there is one tiny thing I haven't mentioned. Bring it. Alexis looked up. It's a huge wedding. One photographer is not going to cut it. Leah waved her hand. Oh, please. My ego's not so big I can't handle a little teamwork. Who else you bringing in? Alexis bit her lip, and Leah tensed at the rare unease she saw on her usually confident friend's face. Alexis leaned forward and touched her arm. Leah, you have to know how impossible it is to book one good photographer on short notice in June, much less two, and I'm counting myself lucky because two of the best happen to be available, but... But what? Leah asked her heart pounding faster as she somehow knew what her friend was trying to say, knew whose name Alexis was terrified to say. Alexis's gaze cut away from hers and fell somewhere over Leah's shoulder, even as Leah felt the shiver of awareness that someone else had stepped into her personal space. Alexis glared at the newcomer. Your early roads. Leah's heart stopped just for a moment. Slowly, she turned around and glanced up into the dark brown eyes of Jason Rhodes. He pulled a toothpick from his mouth and gave her a slow, sexy once-over. Hiya, Red. Long time. Leah could only shake her head. It had been a long time, but not nearly long enough. Not only was he the one man on the planet she could absolutely, positively not work with, he was the one man who Leah had let in close enough to break her heart. Chapter 2 Jason Rhodes had never been particularly into politics. Sure, he voted, kept up on current affairs, but most of the time he thought whatever the hell went on in D.C. was 80% bullshit. Still, even he knew that working the wedding of Kylie Preston was a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity, the type of resume booster that could get your work featured in People magazine and ensure that you were in business for life. But that wasn't why Jason had said yes when Alexis Morgan had called and offered him the job. Not the main reason, anyway. No. The main reason he'd agreed was because of a tall, curvaceous, red-haired siren who came with the package, and who was currently sitting in the reception area of the bed and breakfast Jason had just checked into. Jason had been about to head up to his room, but the second his eyes locked on Leah nursing a glass of white wine, her drink of choice when she was stressed, he recalled, the red was reserved for when she wanted to let loose. He found himself juggling the key in his palm before heading in her direction. It was stupid. Suicide, really. Especially considering their brunch meeting less than a week earlier had ended with her very deliberately dumping a glass of ice water in his crotch. And yet... Even though Jason would bet serious money that he was on a kamikaze mission by even approaching, staying away from Leah McHale when she was this close seemed like a non-option. He was the helpless moth to her curvy, prickly, hot as sin flame. It was too bad the feeling was not mutual. She'd made that perfectly clear the day she'd walked out on him a year ago without so much as a glance over her shoulder, without giving him a chance to explain. Stubborn, wretched woman. And yet here he was, walking toward her and actually looking forward to it, even though he knew the reception he was due to receive would be far from warm. Moth, meet flame. Unlike the large corporate hotels that dominated Manhattan, the ritzy oceanfront inn where the bride's family had put them up held no sleek bar or endless array of seating options. Just a small bar cart set up in the corner where guests were free to help themselves, 
and a handful of tables meant for quiet conversation or solitude. It didn't take a genius to figure out that Leah, with her white wine and her iPad, was hoping for the solitude option. It gave him great pleasure to disrupt her. She glanced up just as he dropped his bag to the floor beside her feet and settled on the chair across from her. Hiya, Red. Her gray-green eyes remained perfectly stoic as she took a sip of wine and slowly set the glass back on the table. Rhodes. Jason reached across the table to where her hotel key sat near her elbow, grabbing it before she could stop him. No plastic key cards for this classy joint. The keys themselves were old-fashioned and metal, but Jason didn't give a shit about the key itself. He flipped over the silver plate that indicated her room number. Perfect. With a slow grin, he held up his own key, room eight to her room seven. Neighbors. Think they have thin walls? Gosh, I hope so. She gushed sarcastically, taking another sip of wine, slightly larger than the last, he noticed. It'll be so much fun for me to hear whatever adolescent girl you manage to pick up giggle when she sees the tiny little thing you've got masquerading as a penis. Jason narrowed his eyes as he pulled the ever-present cinnamon tic-tac case from his front jeans pocket. He flipped the lid open with a thumb, watching Leah as he tilted three of the little candies into his mouth. The tip of her tongue flicked out almost subconsciously, touching the center of her bottom lip briefly before she jerked her gaze away. He wondered if she was remembering his taste as vividly as he remembered hers. Still on those, huh? She asked, jerking her chin toward the Tic Tacs. Jason lifted a shoulder in confirmation. The red breath mints had started out as a replacement for cigarettes, back when he'd quit smoking eight years earlier. He rarely got the urge for a smoke anymore, but the craving for cinnamon was constant, especially when he was agitated and being around Leah McHale ensured that he was always agitated. Leah blew out a tiny, irritated sigh. Look, I thought we agreed that we'd do this job with as little contact as possible. Huh, he said, leaning forward. See, that's not how I remember it. I actually remember showing up at the restaurant for a business meeting, just in time to watch you have a temper tantrum over a misunderstanding that happened a year ago. Misunderstanding? Her voice went low and angry as she leaned forward. A beautiful woman opens your boyfriend's front door at 7 a.m. on a Sunday morning, wearing nothing but a shirt that I bought you. Tell me how I misunderstood that. Jason leaned forward, happy to meet her confrontational posture. Easy there, Red. You missed your chance to let me explain that when you ran away and then dodged my phone calls for a month. It still burned. And Jason had never been the type to lick his wounds. Not when an endless string of foster families had kicked him to the curb. Not when his biological mother had reappeared out of nowhere, only to disappear when she realized that playing mom to a surly 13-year-old boy wasn't as fun as she'd expected, throwing him back into the loop of temporary families all over again. Not even when his Army Ranger career had ended in the blink of an eye, when an Afghan car bomb killed several of his friends and destroyed Jason's knee in the process. But Leah's desertion, that had stung. Not only because he'd thought they'd had something, but because she'd made it very clear that Jason Rhodes wasn't worth even an ounce of complication. He was used to it by now, mostly. But damn, if this woman didn't ignite a temper he didn't even know he'd had since the day he'd laid eyes on the stunning redhead in a photography shop on 18th and 6th. Jason had been helpless against her pull on him, and before he could register his intention to talk to her, he was standing in front of her, asking her to grab a cup of coffee. Coffee had led to a good-natured debate on the merits of Nikon versus Canon cameras, which had led to lunch, which had led to dinner, which led to the hottest affair of Jason's life. Nothing had burned hotter than him and Leah together. And nothing had been quite so cold as the year that followed, when Leah had iced him out of her life entirely. Until now. Now she would be within arm's reach for the next three days, and for the life of him, Jason wasn't sure what he wanted to do about that. 
or rather, he did know, but his body and his brain had very different plans in mind. His body was demanding he take her by the hand, drag her to one of their respective rooms, and put his hands on every inch of that pale, smooth flesh. His brain wanted to punish her, wanted to swipe at her the way she seemed determined to swipe at him, as though they were two enemies on the grade school playground. As for his heart, fuck his heart. Damn thing had done nothing but gotten him into trouble. Look, Rhodes. He held up a finger to halt whatever stick-up-the-ass comment she was going to fling his way and crossed toward the small bar cart in the corner of the room. He splashed some bourbon in a glass for himself before pulling the white wine bottle out of the ice bucket and crossing back to her. Leah didn't protest when he refilled her glass. She even managed a surly thank you. When he sat back down, he lifted his glass toward her. She rolled her eyes. What do we possibly have to toast to? How about the fact that we've made it nearly five minutes without you losing that darling temper of yours and throwing water on my crotch? Leah gave him a withering look. That's what you want to toast to? The fact that you have a dry crotch? Well, I'd toast to your dry crotch, but I don't know that you have one, do you, Red? That's lovely, she said, taking a small sip of her wine. I'm sure former President Preston is going to be just thrilled when he learns he hired the country's crudest man-whore to photograph his daughter's wedding. Is that why you accepted the job? He asked, enjoying the way the smoky bourbon mingled with the cinnamon aftertaste of his Tic Tac. Fame? Honestly, Leah lifted a shoulder. Yeah, I mean, I had a free weekend, so I likely would have jumped at any job that Alexis threw my way but only one this high-profile and high-paying could coax me into working alongside you. Jason sat back and smirked. I love that Alexis didn't give you any warning. A little line appeared between Leah's angular eyebrows, and he knew it pissed her off royally that she'd been blindsided at brunch last weekend, whereas he'd come in with a bit of forewarning. She was trying to before someone had to go and show up early, Leah muttered. Maybe she just knows that if given the chance, you'll avoid hard situations. You're a runner. He stated simply, idly spinning his glass on the table. She touched her fingers to her temple, eyes closing for a moment. Can we just not? Can we not do this? For the rest of the weekend, can we just avoid each other as much as possible and limit our conversation to who's going to photograph what? Jason felt a stab of anger low and hot in his stomach. After a year, he should have written her off. He should have been able to put their fling behind him. And yet seeing her now, that familiar red ponytail that he'd used to wrap around his fist to pull her to him, he fished out another tic-tac, studied her. I'll leave you alone for the rest of the weekend, he said slowly, hating the way her eyes flashed in relief at the thought of not having to deal with him. If... Just like that, her relief turned to wariness, and he felt an odd thrill, knowing that he could still do this to her, that he could still unnerve her as easily as she unnerved him just by breathing. If what? Leah asked, eyes narrowed. If you'll have dinner with me. She was already shaking her head no when he reached across the table, laying his hand alongside hers so his thumb could rub along her little finger. His pulse leapt that simple, harmless touch, and he was seconds away from being hard. And he knew from the way her breathing quickened that she felt it too. Whatever it was. Come on, Red, he said, moving his finger just briefly so the edge of his nail nudged her knuckle. Wedding events don't start until the crack of dawn tomorrow. Give me tonight. Leah slowly pulled her hand away from his, dropping both hands to her lap, and Jason swallowed his disappointment. It was time to get over her. Time to stop thinking that she might ever... Okay. His head snapped up, his eyes locking on her green eyes. Okay? She calmly lifted her wine glass, not breaking eye contact as she took a sip. Okay, I'll have dinner with you, but as a working dinner, not a date. I'm convinced we can figure out how to work together in spite of our thorny past. He resisted the urge to pump his fist in triumph, 
and Leah lifted a warning finger. Again, dinner. I'm not sleeping with you. Jason picked up his bourbon and threw it back in one swallow before standing and grabbing his bag. Before Leah had a chance to react, he'd moved toward her, shamelessly invading her personal space as he bent down and placed his lips near her ear. Sweetheart, by the time I'm done with you, sleep will be the last thing on your mind. Guarantee it. Chapter 3 The first time Leah had seen Jason Rhodes, she'd lost a little part of her soul. Or at the very least, a little part of her dignity. Never in her thirty-one years had she encountered a man who'd been able to turn her on just by looking at her. But then she'd walked into the camera shop on a random Tuesday, and just like that, she'd become one of those women. The kind that wanted sex all the time, wanted it now, and wanted it with him. The problem was, Leah was far from the only woman who had that response to Jason Rhodes. The man was pure fantasy material. Tan skin, perfect white teeth that were displayed to perfection in a cocky, come-hither grin ever-present stubble that gave him a just-crawled-out-of-bed look. He had black hair that he kept short, likely a holdover from his military days, and his eyes were the color of the richest, most decadent dark chocolate. Jason Rhodes had been out of her league then and now, and yet... And yet here he was, whining and dining her as though she mattered as though he hadn't been doing this very thing last week with some other woman and wouldn't be doing it next week with yet another woman. No, the danger in Jason wasn't just that he was charming, although he was, hopelessly so. The problem was he made her feel special, wanted. Once upon a time, she'd loved that feeling. Now she knew that it was just that, a feeling, and one that wasn't based on a scrap of fact. She wasn't special, not to Jason. She'd learned that the hard way when she'd shown up at his apartment with his favorite breakfast sandwich and her heart on her sleeve, only to realize that while she'd spent Saturday night at a rowdy wedding in Queens, shoving her way through the crowd to get the perfect shots, he'd had his own rowdy night in bed with a gorgeous brunette. Leah would do well to remember that moment, standing on his porch, her dignity in pieces at her feet. She would be smart to remember the way her heart had literally hurt when she'd realized that the man she'd been falling in love with had been sleeping around on her. Because right now, when he was sitting across the table from her, making easy conversation, even as he occasionally reached over to scoop up a bite of her risotto as though it were his right, it was hard to remember that he was a complete pig. Hell, she wasn't even sure how the heck they'd ended up there. She'd assumed dinner would be a quick bite at the hotel, but somehow she found herself in one of the trendiest restaurants in town, sharing a meal that felt very much like a date. So, tell me what you've been up to in the year you've been avoiding me, Red, he said as he topped off both of their glasses with an excellent Bordeaux. You mean in the year since you decided to cheat on me? She shot back, not liking the way he continually spun their murky history to be entirely her fault. His brown eyes flashed anger then, but she held up a hand to stop whatever he was going to say. I know, I know, okay? We never agreed to be exclusive. I've spent the past several months trying to train my brain to remember that, so let's just let it go. Leah. Her stomach flipped a little. He'd only ever called her Leah in bed. Otherwise, it was always red. Please don't, she whispered. The anger faded from his gaze, and his mouth flattened with something that looked like resignation. Fine. She swallowed. You asked how I was. He nodded slowly, and she felt a little stab of gratitude that he wasn't going to force them down memory lane. I've been... good, she said, swirling her wine. Really good. Busy. But then I guess that's the perk of our line of work, right? People will never stop falling in love. The corner of Jason's mouth tilted up in amusement. I forgot how you did that. Did what? Romanticize what we do. Leah tilted her head. Well, it is romantic. 
We get to watch people promise to stay together forever. Well, sure, that's what they promise. And I'd forgotten how you did that, Leah said, sprinkling all your jaded skepticism on something beautiful. Ideal in facts, Red, and the facts state that 50% of marriages end in divorce, I know, she said with a little sigh, but I choose to believe that the ones I photograph last forever. Your share of the pie can be the ones that end in divorce. He laughed. And what about this one? What happens when we both work on a wedding? When all my bad vibes mingle with your Disney version? Leah pursed her lips. Happiness wins. It didn't for us, he said quietly. Leah blinked a little in surprise at the seriousness in his voice. For some reason, she'd have thought that their brief time together would have barely registered for him. Jason Rhodes' life had been a rough one. That much she knew and couldn't deny no matter how bad he'd screwed her over. Despite the fact that they'd only been together for a couple months, she talked with him more than with any other boyfriend she'd ever had. Late into the night, they'd stay cuddled in bed while he quietly told her about Afghanistan, about his friend's deaths and the IED that had shredded his knee. He told her about growing up in the foster system, never at one home for more than a year, before being shipped off to the next one. Her heart had ached for him, even as she admired how the man had refused to let himself become a victim. Nobody gets to control how life happens to us, Red. Only how we react to it. And Leah had done some sharing of her own, about how she secretly feared her parents never loved their children as much as they loved each other about how she'd spent most of her 20s thinking something was wrong with her because she'd wanted career success more than she'd wanted a boyfriend. At least until she met him. Leah glanced over at Jason, taking in the somber set of his jaw, the bleak and vaguely defeated look in his eyes. For the first time, she wondered if the aftermath of their relationship hadn't played out quite the way she'd envisioned, with him smugly moving on to the next woman while she'd subsisted on ice cream bars and watching the way we were on repeat for two months straight before she'd managed to throw herself back into the dating ring, unsuccessfully so far, she might add. Surely you've been to at least one wedding where you looked at the bride and groom and thought, them? They're going to make it, Leah asked, steering conversation towards safer topics. Sure, he said, cutting off another piece of steak. My sister's. Leah's hand froze in the process of dragging a piece of bread through the deliciously buttery sauce on her plate. Sister, I thought you were... I thought... Foster kid? He asked without emotion. I was. Didn't even know I had a sister until she found me a few years back. Same mom. Different dads. I didn't realize, Leah said quietly. He looked uncomfortable. I don't... I don't mention her much. It's weird to spend your entire life thinking you're an only child, having nobody, and then all of a sudden this sibling shows up on your doorstep and it's... You just never know how it's going to work out, you know? Jason's voice was nonchalant, but Leah's heart ached for him. She hurt at the realization that this man, by default, was skeptical of trusting anyone. He simply expected everyone to walk away just like she had. Leah pushed that last thought away. Their situation was different. She hadn't left him so much as saved them both a whole lot of awkward when he realized that what was a fun summer fling for him had become a hell of a lot more for her. Your sister's wedding. Did you work it? He shook his head and took a sip of wine. I offered. I'd have done it for free, obviously. But she... Jason glanced down at his plate. She wanted me to walk her down the aisle. His voice was puzzled, as though he still couldn't quite believe it. And again, Leah felt that ache in her chest. I'm glad she found you, Leah said before she could think better of it. His gaze locked on hers, looking very much like he wanted to say something, but instead he gave a slight shake of his head. So, what's the plan tomorrow? Leah blinked, surprised by the sudden change in conversation to work but all too happy to go to a safer place where she wasn't tempted to touch him, care for him.
She hadn't even seen him in a year, for God's sake. Leah forced her mind back to the wedding. Typically, the photographer didn't come into play until the day of the wedding. But since this was a high-profile destination wedding, all of the vendors had arrived on Thursday for a Saturday ceremony. Friday, tomorrow, would be all about prep and celebrating during the day before the evening rehearsal and dinner that followed. Normally, Leah would have been thrilled to be part of what was sure to be one of the more lavish weddings she'd ever worked. But right now, all she could think about was that it meant more time working alongside Jason. And yet you agreed to go to dinner with him. Well, I've been assuming I'll take the whole spa day portion, Leah said, forcing her attention back to work. Unless, of course, you're desperate for some girl talk. Spa day's all you. Much as I do love debating nail polish colors, early mornings aren't my thing, and the calendar Alexis sent over said that the first mani-pedi appointments start at 7 a.m., so they'll be done in time for a champagne brunch. Pass. Leah smirked. Well, did you also see that the guy's tea time is 5 a.m., and they want shots of the groom and former president teeing off? Shit, he muttered. I knew there was golf involved. I just hadn't looked at the time yet. Good thing we're doing an early dinner, she said, popping a piece of bread in her mouth. Leah glanced up and found him watching her, or more specifically, watching her mouth. The bread suddenly felt dry, and she took a sip of water, both to wash it down and to cool her suddenly flaming lady parts. What was it with her body's reaction to this guy? Red. She forced herself to meet his eyes, alarmed to find that they were smoldering, as though he knew her every dirty thought and wanted to act them out in a slow, torturous pace, and then repeat. What? Damn it! Her voice came out all husky. I booked the early dinner reservation on purpose, and not because of our early morning wake-up call. Leah was already shaking her head. Don't do that. I already told you. I know what you told me. He leaned closer to her and lowered his voice so only she could hear. I also know the way you're looking at me. I know that if I took you back to my room right now and dipped my hands into your panties, I'd find you wet and silky and ready for me. Leah's fingers clenched around her wine glass. Or if you weren't wet before, I bet you are now. He murmured. I remember how much you liked the way my fingers rub against you, Leah. Slow and teasing and... Well, this is interesting, a voice interrupted. Leah didn't realize she'd been holding her breath until it whooshed out in agonized relief at the interruption. She whipped her head around just in time to see Alexis Morgan and her assistant making their way over to their table. In a crowd dressed mostly in Hampton's beach casual, Alexis's royal blue sleeveless sweater dress should have looked amiss, but of course, this being Alexis, she instead looked like she owned the entire place. Leah caught her friend's surprise lift of the eyebrows as they hugged. Leah only rolled her eyes in response, girl code for, I'll tell you later, don't make it weird. Alexis and Jason exchanged quick friendly pecks on the cheek. Not going to lie, when I got in today, I half expected to find one of you gloating over the other's dead body, Alexis said. That's definitely on the docket for later, Leah said. And yet she's agreed to have dinner with me, Jason said, giving a very self-satisfied smirk. Yes, that is interesting, Alexis murmured. Leah's only response was a roll of the eyes, because the truth was... She didn't have the faintest clue what had made her say yes to Jason Rhodes's dinner invitation. At first, it had been about proving a point, mostly to herself, that she could work with an ex-boyfriend without letting her personal feelings get in the way of a job. But by the time she'd made it back to her room after drinking her white wine too quickly, suddenly she was feeling a whole lot less modern career woman and a lot more lust-addled moron. The entire time she'd been getting ready, she'd tried to talk herself out of dinner. They could divvy up photography tasks by email, for God's sake, or by daylight, safe, rational, very unsexy daylight. She'd tried to remember all of the pain, 
all of the reasons she absolutely should keep her distance. And even after she'd met him in the lobby, her brain had tried to come up with rationalizations that she hadn't wanted to eat alone, that she'd wanted to prove to him and herself that she was over him. But the truth was, sitting across from him today, when he'd come to terrorize her in the lobby bar of their hotel, had caused memories to come flooding back, and not the bad ones, at least not just the bad ones. So tonight, for tonight only, she was letting herself take a walk down memory lane with blinders on to remember what it had been like when they could talk for hours, the way he could make her laugh, and yes, maybe the way his cinnamon-flavored tongue had tasted, the way it had felt when it trailed down her neck and lower. Leah coughed and gulped some water. Both Alexis and Jason were staring at her, Alexis in amusement, Jason with a sexy-eyed smolder, as though he knew exactly what she was thinking. Alexis cleared her throat. So, the hotel's good? Yes, gorgeous, Leah said, latching onto something to think about other than Jason's hands and tongue. How did you get it on such short notice? Alexis lifted a shoulder. Can't take credit for it. Mr. Preston rented out the entire B&B &B for the wedding vendors, the florist, videographer, me, you guys. Alexis continued speaking, something about the schedule and a snafu with the chair covers for the reception and how the singer of the band had a throat tickle. But Leah had stopped listening, and from the heat coming off Jason, she had a feeling he had too. His eyes drifted down, resting on her lips before he slowly let his gaze run over the rest of her, lingering on all the spots she wanted him to touch. Alexis looked at Leah. Do you want to grab a drink later? Hmm? Leah asked, still distracted by the heat in Jason's gaze. Alexis snorted. I'm thinking that's a no on the drink then. Leah forced herself to look up at her friend, who lifted an amused eyebrow. No, I'd love to grab a drink, she blurted, her enthusiasm sounding forced even to her own ears. Jason and I will be done soon. No, he interrupted. We won't. Leah opened her mouth to retort, but Alexis's soft touch on her shoulder stopped her. Call me later. Wait, I... But Alexis had already moved away with a playful wink. Damn it, Jason, Leah said, glaring at him. Why'd you let her think that we were, you know? He picked up his wine glass and pinned her with a wide-eyed, innocent gaze. We were what? Never mind, she muttered. I can't talk to you when you're like this. Charming, he asked. Presumptuous, she corrected. Contrary to the delusions in your head, you're not every woman's fantasy. I never wanted to be every woman's fantasy, just yours. Leah froze at the unexpected seriousness in his voice. Jason, do you want dessert? He asked abruptly. Leah closed her eyes to ward off the conversational whiplash. We're talking about dessert now? You used to have a sweet tooth. She still did, but right now food was just about the last thing on her mind. No, I'm fine, unless you want something. Jason's smile was quick and hungry. Oh, I want something, Red. I don't think I've ever stopped wanting. He pushed back his chair, stood up, threw some bills on the table, and stretched out his hand. Come on, let's get out of here. Chapter 4 the restaurant Jason had chosen was just a few doors down from the B&B &B where they were staying, but although the walk was only five minutes, it was five long minutes along the beach. As in, Leah McHale was taking an unintentional moonlight beach stroll with Jason Rhodes. She shoved her fists into the pockets of her cardigan as she kept up as quick of a pace as the sand would allow, lest she get any hand-holding ideas. But then, this was Jason. He didn't hold hands so much as screw you, both literally and figuratively. Jason held the front door to their hotel open for her, and wordlessly, Leah preceded him in. It was early yet, so a handful of people sat in the lobby, quietly sipping cocktails and laughing. Drink? Jason asked quietly. She shook her head. I like to get a good eight hours of sleep before a job. His smile was fleeting. 
I know. It had always been a thing with them. As wedding photographers, they'd quite often shared the same schedule. Jam-packed weekends with slower Mondays and Tuesdays, dedicated to long hours of photo editing and printing. And yet, even with the overlap in their schedules, they'd never quite gotten the sleep thing down. Jason was a night owl, preferring to stay up into the wee hours, regardless of what time his wake-up call was later, and then crashing the next day as needed. Leah liked her routine. She got eight hours as consistently as she could. But if anything had been able to tempt Leah away from her routine, it had definitely been this man with his talented hands and wicked mouth. You can stay and hang out, Leah said, nodding at the direction of the cozy reception area. He said nothing as he followed her down the hallway toward their rooms, their connecting rooms. She'd try not to let it be a big deal, but suddenly with the safety of daytime behind them, and with the warm buzz of her wine flowing through her veins, the shared wall suddenly felt like a very big deal. Leah paused in front of her room, digging her key out of her purse. Well, good night, she said, her hand already extending toward the lock. Long, warm fingers closed around her wrist, and Leah's breath caught. Damn it, Rhodes. His eyes were searching her face. Am I alone here, Red? Am I the only one feeling... something? She pulled her hand free and turned to face him, trying to ignore how close he was, trying to ignore that she'd only need to lean forward the slightest bit to put her lips to his. I'm not saying the chemistry's not there, she said carefully. That's not the problem. Then what is the problem, Red? Leah felt a tantrum start to burn low in her belly. She'd been willing enough to play along in his effort to ignore their history in the interest of professionalism, but his playing dumb was more than she could handle. She moved closer, although this time it was in simmering anger rather than white-hot want. My problem is that I thought we had something, Jason. I realize we weren't exchanging rings or love notes. I know we never agreed to exclusivity, but I thought we were at least to the point of being honest to each other. If you wanted to sleep around, why not just tell me? You didn't give me a chance to tell you anything. She let out a harsh little laugh. Right, this is my fault. I'm just saying you're pretty quick to play the victim card for someone who didn't care enough to get all the facts. Leah spread her hands out to the side. All right, let's hear them. Let's hear the facts. His gaze was hot with anger. Sure, I'll just spill my guts to the woman who walked away without a second glance. Because you hurt me, she burst out, her voice cracking. You hurt me, Jason, and I couldn't. I can't. Leah's head dipped forward in defeat, resting against the door, her eyes closing as she realized she didn't know what she was trying to say. And even if she figured it out, she wasn't at all sure she'd want to let Jason Rhodes into that part of her. You weren't the only one that got burned that day, he said, voice tense with anger. You're awfully high and mighty for someone who gave a guy the silent treatment. For a year because we had nothing to say to each other. Bullshit, Jason snapped. What the hell were we doing all summer if we can't so much as give the other person a chance to explain? Fine, explain, Leah said, closing her arms over her chest. His eyes were dark and angry. Would it make a bit of difference? Would you even believe me? Leah squeezed her eyes shut. I can't unsee her, Jason. I can't stop reliving that moment when I knocked on your door and she opened wearing your shirt, a shirt I bought you, and no pants. Of course I didn't stick around. You told me from the very beginning that you weren't looking to settle down. Which you were fine with, he growled softly. You were just fine with the way I could make you come within five seconds of touching you. You didn't mind when I pulled you into the bedroom or the kitchen or wherever the hell we felt like it and kissed every inch of your body. You didn't complain when, stop, she whispered, putting a hand over his mouth before she could think better of touching him. She yanked her hand back as though she'd been burned. He swallowed, his Adam's apple bobbing. If you tell me you don't remember it like I remember it, I'll walk away. 
he said quietly. I'll go into my room, close the door, and I'll never mention it again. Leah opened her mouth to tell him exactly that, to say or do anything to stop this low burn of hunger for him that refused to cool. No words came out, and Jason pressed forward, his hand finding her waist, before his fingers slid forward to curve possessively over her hip. You remember it, he said, pressing his lips to her ear. Torture. Having him this close was pure and utter torture. Somehow, through the haze of her want, Leah heard the sound of approaching laughter coming from the main reception area. Any minute now they'd have an audience, and Jason acted for her. Pulling his key out of his pocket, he slid it into the lock of his room, pushing the door open before pulling her inside and away from prying eyes. Leah tensed, prepared for him to make a move, before she'd properly pep-talked herself on all the reasons they should keep their hands to themselves. But Jason merely tossed his key on the small table by the door, put his hands on his waist, and turned to face her. Waiting. I need to get to bed, she whispered. So you've said. I can't. I don't want to do this with you again, Jason. One summer fling is fine, but two is... He lifted dark eyebrows. Two is what? Suicide? Ruination? Disaster? Leah swallowed. I'll see you tomorrow. Her hand reached behind her, fumbling for the doorknob. He didn't try to stop her didn't move or say a single word as she yanked the door open and all but fell into the hall. As she shoved her own key into the lock of her room, she half expected him to come after her, to use his mouth to remind her of all the reasons she should have stayed. But he didn't. Jason's door stayed resolutely closed, even as Leah opened and shut her own, retreating into the safety of two locked doors between them. She rested her forehead against the doorframe, just for a moment. It was better this way. Safer. It wasn't that Leah shunned casual sex. She liked it. Especially when it was as good as it was with Jason Rhodes. But she'd learned the hard way that with this man, there was nothing casual about it. Her heart had gotten tangled in it, and what had started as a dangerous knot had turned into a noose that had nearly strangled her. It had taken a year to get over him. A smart woman wouldn't sign herself up for more heartache with a man who seemed determined to bed half the city. Hell, for that matter, Leah wouldn't be the least bit surprised if her rejection had rolled right off him, leaving him free to peruse the Hamptons' night scene and find some hot young thing who wouldn't expect a darn thing of him in the morning. The thought of Jason touching anyone else put a sour taste in her mouth, and she slapped her palm against the door lightly in frustration before dropping her purse on the small desk. Leah stormed into the bathroom to brush her teeth, determined to clear her mind of all things tall, dark, and handsome, so that she could get some much-needed sleep. Leah brushed and spat with more vigor than usual. Tomorrow she would wake up and be glad she hadn't reached for Jason. She'd be glad he hadn't kissed her, and that they hadn't... There was a knock at the connecting door just as she was reaching for one of her makeup remover pads. Leah's heart pounded as she went to the door and opened it before she could think, finding one very angry, aroused man waiting on the other side, both palms braced on the door jamb as he leaned in, glowering down at her. What? she whispered. In response, Jason hooked a hand around the back of her neck jerking her face up to his even as he used his broad body to back her into the bedroom. This is what, he said as he kicked the door closed. He spun her around so that her back hit the door with a gentle thump, a half second before his mouth closed over hers. Chapter 5 Jason Rhodes had never been the type of a guy to romanticize a kiss. Hell, he wasn't even sure he considered kissing strictly necessary. He'd had plenty of hookups, where they bypassed kissing altogether and went straight for the good stuff. But with Leah, kissing was the good stuff. Part of it, anyway. There'd be other stuff later, and that would be pretty fucking fantastic, too. 
but Leah had been the only woman where Jason thought that kissing might be enough. Almost. And as he swept his tongue into her mouth and pinned her hands above her head over the door, he realized nothing had changed. An entire year had passed, and yet somehow he was still hungry for this woman, for the taste of her mouth, hungry for the little humming sounds she made when he nipped at her lips. She tasted like the Leah he remembered, and yet not. There was an element to her kiss that was different from before. It nagged at the back of his mind as important somehow. But then she tilted her hips up to his, her pelvis rocking against his cock, and his thoughts scattered. He released her hands to plunge his fingers into all of that glorious red hair, palming her head as he pressed against her until she was molded to him. The feel of her soft curves pressed against his hardness nearly undid him. Jason pulled his mouth away from hers in order to get at her neck, his teeth scraping at that spot below her ear that had always made her gasp. As expected, her breath caught, and she arched more fully against him, and he smiled against her skin, relishing the fact that this hadn't changed, that the connection between them was still electric and unavoidable. He slid his hand over her ribcage, his thumb rubbing along the underside of her breast teasingly, back and forth, slowly, without touching her where she needed. Leah's nails dug into his shoulders. Damn you, Rhodes. What, baby? He asked against her neck. What do you need? Where do you want me to touch you? She remained silent, as he'd known she would. Leah had always been wonderfully, beautifully obstinate, even in bed, resulting in hotter-than-fuck power struggles. Tonight he wasn't giving in. This thing between them would never work if he was always the one making the first move, and he wanted it to work. Needed it to. So instead of ripping their clothes off and thrusting into her the way he wanted to, Jason continued to tease. His fingers found the tops of her breasts, the outside of her thighs, the soft curve of her lower belly. He pulled back, wanting to see her, wanting to see his hands on her. Beautiful, he whispered, watching as his hands skimmed over her sides. So damned. Leah pulled his mouth down to hers with one hand as the other gripped his wrist, putting his palm over her breast. Touch me. He smiled against her mouth. There was his girl. He rewarded her with a sweep of his thumb over her nipple, feeling the slight roughness of her lace bra over the hard tip of her breast. She'd always loved pretty lingerie, joking that she blew most of her clothing budget on bras only to throw a $5 t-shirt over the top. That was damn fine with him. She could wear a tarp for all he cared. It was worth it when he finally saw her in the naughty bra and panty sets she loved. Undressing Leah had always been like unwrapping a beautiful gift, each revealed layer more stunning than the last, until you got to the best gift of all, her bare skin. He pulled back, his eyes locking on hers as his fingers slid down to the hem of her shirt. He lifted his eyebrows in question, and wordlessly she lifted her arms so that he could slide her sleeveless top up and off. The second the shirt cleared her head, Jason groaned. As expected, her breasts were covered in black lace, the pretty fabric displaying her tits to their full, creamy perfection. Jason breathed out a reverent sigh, dipping his head forward and brushing his lips across the top slope of her breast as he gently grazed her nipples with the knuckles of two fingers. They hardened even more beneath his touch, and he reached down to adjust the cock that was straining painfully against his jeans. He was torn between keeping both of his hands full of her versus using one of them to stroke himself while he feasted on her. In the end, there was no question. It was her. Always her. He could get himself off any time. And he had plenty in the last year while picturing exactly this sight. Leah McHale all flushed and rosy and panting for him. Jason's tongue slipped under the edge of her bra to flick at her nipple and she cried out, her hands going to his waistband, hooking her fingers into his belt buckle and jerking him forward. 
She rubbed the front of her black pants against his cock, making sexy little want noises that nearly had him coming in his pants like a teenage boy. Jesus, he muttered, pulling back. He fisted his hand in her hair, taking her mouth in a possessive kiss before he dragged her toward the bed. Leah had always loved being handled just a little bit roughly, and he loved the way her eyes lit in arousal as he shoved her back on the bed so that she fell with a slight bounce, her fantastic breasts nearly coming free from their tiny lace confines. Jason all but threw himself on top of her, sliding three fingers into the fabric of her bra and jerking it down, his eyes latching onto hers before he slowly extended his tongue and ran it across her nipple in one slow, teasing swipe. Her teeth sank into her bottom lip, her eyes squeezing shut. Jason. His name was a plea on her lips, and he gave her what she wanted, pulling her into his mouth and sucking hard before pulling back and grazing the tip of her breast lightly with his teeth. She bucked, her knees coming up, and he shifted between them, resting in the perfect notch of her spread legs as he pressed both hands to her shoulders, holding her still so that he could taste everything, not even bothering to remove her bra as he feasted on her. Nobody tastes like you, Jason said with a groan as his tongue circled her. Nobody's come close. Jason barely had time to register what was happening until she was frantically scooting away from him. Whoa, hey, he said, placing one hand on her knee to keep her from kicking him in the nuts, even as the other hand reached for hers, making a grab for her before she could slide all the way off the bed. But she dodged his grab, clawing frantically at her bra to put it to rights as she stood and glared at him, eyes blazing. Get out! Jason's mouth dropped open. Her breasts were still damp from his mouth. His dick was still hard enough to cut glass, and she wanted him to leave? What the hell, Red? This hot and cold thing is new. I've only ever known hot. Her eyes narrowed even further before she pointed to the door. Out. He sat up, running a hand through his hair. What just happened? Nobody comes close, she said, echoing his words back to him. You really think that was the thing to say to me? You really think I'd want the reminder that I'm one of dozens? He stared at her. What? What are you even... You don't get it, she shouted. I don't want to be one of your many women. I don't want to be with the type of man who's comparing the taste of my breasts to all other breasts. Jason blinked. Leah, that's not... Get out! To his horror, her eyes filled with tears and she swore softly before turning away and pressing the heels of her palms against her eyes. He was off the bed in a heartbeat, his hand resting along her back as he tried to make her understand. Red, you've got it all wrong. It wasn't... I didn't mean... She pulled away. I know you never mean, Jason. You just... are. And I don't hate you for it. I really don't. It's just... My brain knows better or at least it's going to from here on out. What are you trying to say? She turned toward him, her eyes still shimmering, but her mouth set in a stubborn, resolute line as she crossed her arms over herself. I'm saying that I don't want to be with someone who's been with everyone else, not even for a one-night fling. Jason's temper snapped, quietly but thoroughly. Once again, she wasn't going to give him a chance to explain. Once again, she was running away from this thing between them without having all the facts. Could he have told her the facts? Yes. Should he have? Absolutely. He should have chased her down, told her that she had it wrong, that he would never cheat on anyone, least of all her. But in the end, pride had won over common sense. Back then, he'd wanted so badly for her to be different, for her to be the one person in his life who hadn't thought, Yep, there he goes, fucking it up again. But in the end, she'd been like everyone else, assuming the worst without so much as a backward glance. So he hadn't chased her. He hadn't insisted she listen to him. Why bother? When she'd already decided. Jason needed someone who believed in him, and he'd thought that person might just be Leah, but she'd proved him wrong. 
and she'd very nearly broken him. Nearly, but not quite, and he sure as hell wasn't going to let her that close again. He could tell her now. It was so fucking tempting to throw all of her assumptions and bullshit in her face. But doing so would admit a hell of a lot more than he was ready to. One did not lay his heart at a woman's feet when she was clearly determined to stomp on it. Fine, he snapped, shoving both hands through his hair in irritation. You want to go ahead thinking of me as a man whore? Have at it. I want more than some hot-tempered redhead who thinks she knows everything about everyone. I think we all know what you want more of, she said sarcastically. More women, more sex. Jason didn't stick around to hear the rest of her rampage. He was out the door, slamming it with more force than necessary, before storming into his own room. Once there, he bent at the waist, resting both hands on his knees, taking deep breaths until the urge to punch something subsided. God damn the woman! She'd always been the only one who could turn him inside out, who could hurt him with careless words. Once the anger subsided, Jason stood, slumping back against the door in defeat. He pulled his Tic Tacs out of his pocket and popped four into his mouth. Only then did he realize what had bothered him so much about that first kiss. These were his first Tic Tacs since before dinner, and yet he'd tasted cinnamon when he kissed her. She'd tasted like cinnamon. The question that Jason turned over in his mind as he tossed and turned later that night was, Why? Chapter 6 You know that the bride's blonde, not red-haired, right? Jason very subtly shifted his camera lens away from Leah and refocused on his original target, the bride and groom. Shut up, Heather. The curly-haired blonde next to him smirked. Heather Fowler was one of the wedding bell's planners, or assistant planner. He'd never paid much attention to the hierarchy, other than to know that Heather was Alexis Morgan's right-hand woman, and damn good at it. Jason was one of the bell's go-to photographers, as was Leah, and after working dozens of weddings, he'd come to know the entire bell's team fairly well. He got along equally well with Alexis, Heather, and the currently very pregnant Mel, although it was he and Heather who'd connected the most. There was just something about all of her manic energy and take-no-bullshit candor. They'd clicked almost immediately and had been friends ever since. Never romantic, though. Not even close. Despite what Leah thought, he was capable of spending time with a woman without nailing her. Uh-oh, Heather said, the smirk heavy in her voice. He ignored her as he pulled the camera away from his eye, to scroll through the viewfinder of his most recent shots, making sure they were coming out as he wanted. I thought you were over her, Heather Stage whispered. Don't you have somewhere to be, he asked, fussing with bows or safety pinning hems or some shit? Nah, the rehearsal dinner is more or less a night off, she said, leaning in to look at the pictures he'd just taken. You know, making sure nobody gets too drunk and gives anyone in the bridal party a black eye. That sort of thing. Hey, is that a picture of Leah I just saw? He pulled the camera away before her prying eyes could see too much. Have I told you how grateful I am that both you and Alexis are working this wedding? It's a big wedding, she said with a cheeky grin. Plus, I begged her to let me tag along. I hardly have any weddings of my own yet since I'm still a junior associate, and there's no way I'd pass up the bragging rights to seeing the president's daughter get hitched. Jason glanced across the room to where the bride was chatting happily with her girlfriends. He and Leah had agreed in a terse exchange earlier that she'd cover the bride's side while he stuck mostly to the groom's side, but Jason hadn't been able to resist taking a few shots of his own of the bride and her father. It wasn't every day someone got to share oxygen with the former president, after all. Although surprisingly, the whole day had been a good deal less fussy than Jason had feared. Considering they were dealing with the man who'd up until recently ran the free world, the wedding festivities had been more relaxed and low-key, minus the not-so-subtle Secret Service agents. The bride seemed as sweet and refined as she'd always seemed on TV. The groom, genuinely smitten, much to the delighted ribbing of his overgrown frat boy wedding party. 
Despite Leah's accusations that he didn't believe in happy endings, he knew one when he saw it in progress, and he had a good feeling about Brent and Kylie. So what's going on with you two anyway? Heather chirped as Jason shifted to get a shot of the former first lady laughing with the groom's mother. What's going on with who? he asked. Heather flicked his forearm. Don't play dumb. You've either had a camera glued to your face or you've been watching Leah all day. He shot her a glance and wiggled his eyebrows. Which means you've been watching me, huh? Heather rolled her eyes. Please. Alexis asked me to keep an eye on you two. Make sure you didn't end up taking naked pictures of each other instead of focusing on the bride and groom. Leah and I are professionals, he ground out, irritated at the implication that he'd ever shirk his photography duties. Dang, she's got you tangled up in all kinds of knots, Heather said in awed delight. Jason didn't even bother to deny this. Out of the corner of his eye, he saw Leah get down on one knee to get a shot of the president's niece linking hands with the groom's cousin as the two little girls spun in giddy circles, their laughter lighting up the room, even over the music of the Sinatra soundtrack. He watched as Leah laughed with the little girls. He raised his eyebrows in surprise as Leah handed over her very heavy, very expensive camera and let the kids take a goofy selfie. His stomach twisted. Leah was good with kids. Of course she would be. She had all sorts of goodness and patience and understanding. Just not when it came to him. He lifted his camera once more, trying to get in the zone. His lens landed on a cute blonde who was staring right into the camera. Her smile was slow, seductive, and painfully obvious. Jason subtly shifted, pretending he hadn't seen her. It wasn't the first time women flirted with him at a wedding. And it wouldn't be the last, but he'd never found it quite so annoying until now, when there was only one woman he wanted. Maybe Leah was right to put up walls between them. If this was how it felt to be completely consumed with another person, he'd never survive it. Jason slowly let himself get lost in the party, moving around the crowd, seeing what they saw, capturing what they felt. He knew Leah did the same, because the few times his camera lens caught her in the periphery, the camera was always to her face. Only once did he find her watching him, her expression unreadable, and it did something dangerous to his chest. She tasted like cinnamon. Heather found him once more as the night was drawing to a close, a full dinner plate in hand. Eat. He glanced down at the fancy plate. There was some sort of fussy piece of steak covered in a sauce, asparagus with yellow creamy gunk on top. He was sure it was as delicious as it was expensive, and although he appreciated when clients took care to feed their vendors, Jason wasn't in the mood. His eyes scanned the room for Leah, seeing her talking to Alexis on the far side, looking as tired as he felt. It was always like this after an event, but damn, they hadn't even gotten to the wedding yet. Heather sighed and set the plate of overpriced food on a nearby table. She's the reason you didn't go out with Liz, huh? Jason tore his eyes away from Leah and looked at Heather in confusion. Who's Liz? Heather shook her head. Exactly. Liz is my friend. The one who you'd be perfect for. I tried to set you guys up on a date a few months back, but you canceled last minute. Never called her back. Did I forget to tell you what an asshat move that was, by the way? Shit, sorry, Heather. Jason felt a little stab of guilt. He hadn't been completely celibate in the year since he and Leah had gone up in flames, but he'd mostly limited his interaction with women to the one-night stand variety, steering clear of the relationship-seeking kind. There was only one woman with whom he wanted the title of boyfriend, and she didn't seem to think he was worthy of the role. It wasn't the anger so much as the hurt that had Jason's eyes scanning the room until his gaze landed on the slim blonde who'd been giving him the look all night. Sure enough, she was hanging out in the corner under the pretense of rummaging through her purse, glancing over at him to see if he was going to make a move. Early on in his career, Jason had made it a point to never sleep with any of the wedding guests. It was just bad form. But Leah didn't know that. His hurt caused a flash of pettiness, and Jason was moving across the room toward the blonde 
until he could think better of it. He stopped in front of her, extending his hand. Hi, Jason. The girl was prettier than he realized, and younger. Younger than he'd like. But hey, he wasn't actually planning to sleep with her. What was the harm in a casual dinner with a pretty woman? She gave a slow, pleased smile, placing her hand in his. Autumn. Care to join me for something to eat? I didn't have a chance to grab dinner, and I've heard there's a place nearby with late-night burgers. Autumn blinked, clearly a little surprised that his offer had involved food instead of sex, but she recovered quickly. Sure, I'd like that. He jerked his chin in the direction of the door, placing a hand on Autumn's back as he followed her out into the warm summer night. Jason didn't let himself look back to see if Leah was watching. He told himself he didn't care. He was a liar. Chapter 7 It was a good wedding. The best kind, really. The kind where there was so much love coming from every direction that Leah teared up right alongside the bride and groom and their parents. In fact, when the former president had walked Kylie down the aisle, looking for all the world that it was the proudest moment in his life. Her eyes had gotten so watery she'd panicked, terrified that she was about to miss some of the best shots. The strong hand that had lightly touched her shoulder before subtly pressing a tissue into her hand had made her cry all the more. I've got you, Jason had whispered. And then he'd nudged her aside, taking over the coming down the aisle shots even though they'd already agreed that she'd cover that part of the ceremony. Somehow he'd known, known that she'd be crying, known that she'd need help, and he'd been there for her. Other than brief exchanges over who would cover what angle of the first dance, they hadn't spoken since. As Leah packed up her equipment, she told herself that it was for the best. It was better to let that moment during the ceremony be nothing but a brief moment of kindness from a good man, rather than a moment between lovers. It was dangerous to let herself think that it might have been a moment between two people who cared. As though he hadn't left the rehearsal dinner with some hot blonde in a sparkling dress. Leah swallowed hard at the memory of what it had felt like when he'd put his hand on the other woman. Thank goodness for Alexis's presence. The always collected wedding planner had stepped in front of Leah before she could do anything rash. If you want him, go get him. If you don't, let him go. It had been good advice. It had also been a hell of a lot easier said than done. Because Leah did want Jason. She just didn't want him and all the other women. Hey, sweetie, how you holding up? As exhausted as me? Leah glanced up to see Heather Fowler one of Alexis's wedding planners, smiling down at her. Ugh, yes, Leah said as she stood and slung the strap of her camera bag over her shoulder. Why is it that we don't build up any stamina for these things? Each one seems to wipe me out even more than the last. Heather shrugged. It's because we care. It's not just a job to us. Leah nodded distractedly. She liked Heather. She considered the curly-haired Spitfire a friend of sorts, but Heather was also tight with Jason. Leah had seen them talking just moments before he'd walked out last night with the hot blonde. It was taking all of her self-control not to beg Heather for details. Perhaps Heather was in tune with Leah's turmoil because she lifted her arm, holding out a champagne bottle that Leah hadn't noticed before. Alexis said you'd want this. It's on the bells. Leah smiled. Good old Alexis, noticing every detail, even when it wasn't related to the client. For as long as she could remember, Leah had celebrated the end of a wedding with some much-needed solitude and champagne. She usually stopped somewhere to get a bottle of her own, but tonight she happily accepted the gift from her friends. She knew exactly where she wanted to drink it, too. Thanks, babe, she said, blowing Heather a kiss. Without meaning to, Leah's eyes scanned the reception area for Jason and came up empty. Most likely, he was already helping some skinny wedding guest out of her thong. Swallowing the hurt, Leah lifted the bottle in thanks. Tell Alexis I owe her one. Heather nodded. Leah had taken only three steps when the other woman called her name. She turned. What's up? 
Heather bit her lip, clearly conflicted, before she closed the short gap between them, lowering her voice to a whisper. He didn't sleep with her. Leah frowned. What? The blonde woman last night. Jason didn't sleep with her. Leah's heart thudded. I don't care. You do care, Heather said emphatically. Honestly, you two are pissing me off. Anyway, Alexis and I ended up at the same restaurant as them last night. He sat there for about 20 minutes looking bored before he paid up and left. Alone. It shouldn't have mattered as much as it did, but... Leah stepped forward and wrapped her arms around Heather, squeezing hard. Thank you. Heather squeezed her back. You two are ridiculous. Work it out. Leah didn't know what to say to that, so instead she just kissed her friend's cheek, gave her a little finger waggle, and then headed out into the warm evening, champagne bottle in hand. The wedding reception had been held at one of the Hamptons' most exclusive resorts. They'd rented the entire property, leaving both the indoor and outdoor spaces available for use, so guests could wander between the two. Leah made her way across the patio as the caterer started the long, slow cleanup process, smiling at the tipsy laughter of some of the leftover guests. As one would expect from the wedding of a former president's daughter, the decor was both lavish and tasteful, with white candles covering every available surface and the pale pink and mint green color scheme providing the perfect combination of timeless and trendy. Alexis and her team had outdone themselves, but beautiful as the venue was, Leah was all too eager to get away from it, to have a chance to breathe. Leah had opted for a tasteful black dress for the wedding, just dressy enough not to be distracting, but comfortable enough that she could move around easily. Her shoes were new, black wedge pumps that had seemed perfectly comfortable at the beginning of the evening. Now, not so much. Leah paused on the last step leading down to the beach, kicking off her shoes and shoving them into her oversized bag. Before stepping onto the sand, she let out an audible sigh of relief. Bliss. Pure bliss. It was cliché, but Leah had always loved the sand between her toes, and it was a sensation she didn't get nearly enough. The Hamptons' beaches were almost always crowded during the summer months, but at half past one in the morning, she nearly had the beach to herself, and she breathed in relief. Inhaling the salty ocean air, Leah walked toward the water, stopping when she was close enough for the sound of the waves to drown out the sound of a nearby bonfire, but not so close that she'd get wet. After double-checking to make sure her bag was all the way zipped to protect her camera from sand, she dropped down with a long sigh of relief at finally being off her feet. Not caring in the least that her new, expensive dress was getting covered in sand, Leah stretched her legs forward, burying her toes before tilting her head up to the clear night sky. It wasn't a full moon, not a crescent moon either, just sort of an odd part of the lunar cycle that gave the moon a strange, misshapen appearance, but that was okay. The night was still pretty close to perfect, if a bit lonely. Reaching for the champagne, she removed the foil and twisted off the cork with a satisfying pop and hiss before she realized she'd forgotten a glass. Leah shrugged. Oh, well. With nobody around to see or judge, she shamelessly tilted the bottle back to her lips and took a long, satisfying sip. Alexis had splurged on the good stuff, and the crisp, bubbly liquid felt like heaven on her tongue. Looks like you won't be needing these after all. Leah whipped her head around, startled by the interruption, and even more startled to see two long-stemmed champagne flutes dangling from a masculine hand. Even before her eyes trailed up the buff male body, Leah knew whose face she would see. It was exactly the one she wanted to see, even as she'd been telling herself desperately that she didn't. Hi, she said quietly. In response, Jason lowered himself to the sand beside her. He ditched his shoes as well, and while the dress pants rolled up should have looked goofy, instead he looked relaxed and wonderful. And sexy. Leah longed to move her own calf so that it brushed against his. She didn't, but it didn't matter. The heat radiating off him nearly burned her anyway. She wordlessly held out the champagne bottle to him, 
expecting him to pour the liquid into the two glasses he'd brought. But instead, he set the flutes to the side and wrapped long fingers around the neck of the bottle. He held her eyes as he tilted the bottle to his lips. She watched the motion greedily, feeling somehow thrilled by the fact that they were drinking from the same bottle. It was the casual intimacy that she missed most between them. Well, that and the mind-blowing sex. For long moments they said nothing. They watched the waves. They passed the champagne bottle back and forth. The first time their fingers brushed, Leah's breath caught. The second time their fingers brushed, he lingered, the pads of his fingers rubbing along the length of hers in what could have been a careless touch. But the way her nipples tightened, the way she grew damp between her thighs, she knew there was nothing careless about it. It was a caress, one she wanted. They didn't talk about the wedding. They didn't need to, really. As photographers, they saw things other people didn't and knew that words would never be able to adequately describe the moments captured on their cameras, waiting to be brought to life in their respective studios. Leah wasn't sure how long they sat there in silence. The bottle got lighter and lighter, and her mind started to feel more and more sparkly, but she wasn't sure if it was from the champagne or from Jason. She didn't overthink it. For now, it was enough to sit in comfortable silence with someone who got her. They may have had their fights, their differences, their heartache, but in this moment there was nobody else she'd rather be with. It was Jason who finally broke the silence with a quiet, unexpected statement that had her heart tripping over itself. You tasted like cinnamon, he said gruffly. Her head swung around to look at his profile. What? He didn't look at her as he tipped the bottle back, eyes locked on the dark waves in front of them. The other night when I kissed you, you tasted like cinnamon. Between anyone else, the comment would have been harmless and random, but the way her heart pounded was anything but harmless. Leah forced herself to shrug, says the guy who thinks cinnamon Tic Tacs are a food group. This time Jason did look at her, his gaze both steady and urgent. I hadn't had a Tic Tac since before dinner. The taste was coming from you, Red. Leah couldn't look away. So I use cinnamon toothpaste. Big deal. She reached for the champagne bottle, but he pulled it away, just out of reach. You didn't before. People are allowed to switch toothpastes. But from regular old mint to the far more unusual and controversial cinnamon? Leah pulled her knees up to her chest, wrapping her arms around them, feeling the need to protect herself from his questions. Leah. His voice was quiet but insistent, and she turned her head, resting her cheek on her knees as she forced herself to look at him. Leah had expected his eyes to be demanding and prying, but instead they were tender. Slowly he reached out a hand, brushing his fingers along her cheek before tucking a strand of hair behind her ear. Why'd you switch, Red? he asked, but the look in his eyes told her he already knew the answer. She pressed her lips together and held his gaze, begging him to understand without making her say the words out loud. Because I wanted a little piece of you, if only in something as ridiculous as toothpaste. His brown eyes seemed to darken as he searched her face before he nodded once, slowly. Jason stood then, picking up the unused champagne flutes and tucking them into the same hand as the champagne bottle he still held. Leah's heart dropped as she realized she was losing him, that he was going to walk away without understanding, without knowing. And then his other palm extended in front of her, reaching for her. She glanced up into his eyes, and he lifted his eyebrows in question, his mouth tilting up at the corner in a gentle smile. Before she could think better of it, Leah placed her hand in his, the heat of his palm warm and sure beneath hers. He pulled her up, waiting as she bent down to pick up her bag. Jason pulled her closer, gently, until their toes bumped, and then her breasts against his chest, and then they were belly to belly, plastered together beneath the moonlit sky as she tilted her face up to his. Jason's kiss was slow and soft, his lips moving across hers in gentle seduction as he slowly wrapped both arms around her. 
The embrace should have been awkward. Between the champagne in his hand and her big, bulky camera bag, they couldn't get as close as either wanted, but it was enough. The hot, tongue-twisting kiss in the sand was enough. And then his tongue swept deeper into her mouth, his arm wrapping around the back of her neck, and it was no longer enough. Not nearly. She needed more. She needed all of him. Jason pulled back slowly, his eyelids heavy as he looked down at her. Spend the night with me, Red. Just one night. I won't ask for more if you don't want to give it. It was the moment she was dreading, and the moment she'd been longing for, all mingled into one glorious second of time. In the end, there was only one answer. She lifted her hand to his face, her fingertips tracing his full bottom lip. Take me. Chapter 8 They reached for each other, even before the door of his hotel room had clicked shut. Their mouths were hot and hungry, as their lips met and clung, their hands ripping at each other's clothes. It had always been like this with him. From the very first time they'd locked eyes, she'd known. Known that there would never be anyone who could make her feel this frantic, so full of need just by looking at her. When they were both breathless from the kiss, Leah stepped back slightly and then turned slowly so that her back was facing him. She gathered her long hair in one hand and glanced over her shoulder, eyebrows lifted in invitation. Jason's hands immediately went for the zipper of her dress as he stepped close and pressed a warm kiss to the side of her neck before sucking her skin between his teeth and slowly drawing the zipper down until he reached the small of her back. He pulled back, bending to place his lips at the base of her spine, just above the edge of her panties, before moving his mouth back up, giving her goosebumps as his bottom lip dragged wetly along her hot skin. He paused at her bra clasp, flicking it open with skilled fingers, before gently pushing the dress off her shoulders. Leah shimmied out of the dress and bra, but when she started to turn toward him, he stopped her. Jason's palm found her stomach as he pulled her toward him, his hard chest firm against her back. Teasing fingers stroked along her belly, the edge of his little finger skimming just under the edge of her underwear before pulling back, his thumbs rubbing along the underside of her breasts, testing their heavy weight without giving her what she needed. Teasing. He'd always liked to tease. In response, Leah arched her back, rubbing the curve of her butt against the hard ridge of his cock, smiling when he swore roughly. Two could play at this game. She let her head fall back on his shoulder, even as her hand slid up the front of his thighs, her nails digging into the firm muscles, only to skate away before touching the part of him that was hard and ready for her. His big palms closed over her breasts, and they both moaned as his hands lifted them, his fingers plucking at the peaks just hard enough so that she cried out with a sharp moan. You feel so good, he said against her neck, pinching her nipples lightly. So fucking good. Leah was panting now, needing more. She gripped his wrist, trying to pull it downward, but he resisted with a soft laugh. Not yet, baby. Not until you're begging. He turned her around then, bending his knees, his eyes locking on hers, as he gave her nipple a quick flick with his tongue, only to pull back and blow gently. Leah gasped, and he grinned evilly as he moved forward again, pressing soft kisses everywhere but on the tip until finally she gripped his hair and guided him where she wanted him. Yes, he whispered before she pressed the tip of her breast into his waiting, wet mouth. Her breath caught as she glanced down. His eyes had closed, his eyelashes impossibly dark, his cheeks forming little hollows as he sucked her. She'd missed this. God, how she'd missed the way they were. It had never been just touch with them. It had been the sights and the sounds and the very essence of the other person. Jason repeated the same loving treatment on the other breast as her fingers continued to tingle in his soft, dark hair whispering words of encouragement as he worshipped her. His hands rested on her waist as he lowered all the way to his knees, his fingers hooking on the edge of her thong but nothing more, as he once again met her eyes. 
Leah nodded, but he only lifted his eyebrows. Say it out loud, she groaned. Jason. He moved his hand slightly, his thumb stroking the seam of her through the soaked satin of her panties. You want me to take your pretty panties off, Leah? She nodded. He slipped a thumb under the lace edge, just barely, teasing her. You want me to touch you right here? God, yes. Please. His finger disappeared and she moaned. Still waiting to hear it. She swallowed and looked down, meeting his eyes. I want you to take my panties off. Good girl, he said, running his index finger over her wet slit. And then what? Her want made her brave. Touch me. Lick me. It was all he needed. Rough hands jerked her thong down, but when Leah would have moved to step out of them, he slid a warm hand around to palm her ass, pulling her forward against his waiting mouth. Leah cried out as his tongue found her center, licking her with wet, slick strokes up and down. He slid a finger into her, then a second, his fingers pumping in exactly the right rhythm as his mouth closed around her clit sucking it gently as he worked it over with his tongue in short, perfect strokes. Her orgasm came so fast, so strong, that she didn't have a chance to prepare mentally or physically before she was bucking against his mouth, her cries mingling with his quiet groans of encouragement. Just when her knees would have buckled, he stood, wrapping a firm arm around her waist before guiding her to the bed. He pushed her down. Sit. She did watching as he quickly tugged off the tie she'd already loosened and peeled off his white dress shirt. He watched her the entire time, his eyes locked hungrily on her naked body. Don't you move, Red, he growled as he stripped off the rest of his clothes. Don't you dare move. She shook her head. She wouldn't. She was here tonight, all the way. Tomorrow? Tomorrow was a different story. But tonight... She wanted this, needed this one last night with him. Then perhaps she could let him go. Jason kicked his pants aside before standing tall and proud before her, his cock as hard and long and as perfect as she remembered. He started to move forward to place a knee on the bed beside her, but she stopped him with a hand against his hip. Her eyes met his as she dipped her head forward, placing a soft kiss on the velvety tip of his cock. Jason swore, his hands tangling in her hair. Leah dragged her tongue down one side of the shaft, then the other, loving the way his breath came in shallow gasps. She wrapped one hand around his base, the other lightly cupping his balls as she drew him forward. Leah parted her lips, resting the tip of him just inside her mouth. And then she waited remembered how he liked to be in control in this moment, how he liked to push forward and watch himself slowly sink into her mouth. For a moment, neither of them moved, and for a terrible moment, she worried she'd remembered wrong, or perhaps his tastes had changed, maybe some other woman had. Red, he said, reverently, his fingers touching her cheek briefly, and then his fingers crept to the back of her head, and his hips eased forward until he was seated as deeply in her mouth as possible. Christ. Christ, you remember that I like fucking your mouth. She nodded, just slightly, her mouth full of him, and he swore again, his hips pumping gently as he rocked in and out of her. Leah let him use her, loved the way he used her, the way he alternated his strokes between fast and shallow and long and slow. His grip on her hair was tighter now, and just as she prepared herself to taste him, he pulled out of her mouth with a wet, sucking noise. Fuck, he muttered. Jason bent to kiss her mouth, roughly, before moving to the corner of the room, rummaging in his bag until he came back with a condom. He'd already ripped open the wrapper by the time he made it back to the bed. Scoot back, he said, rolling the condom on with one hand, his other tweaking her nipple. Spread your legs for me. Leah whimpered with need as she obeyed, moving back to the middle of the bed, biting her lips as she shamelessly let her knees fall apart. He followed her onto the bed, 
surprising her when he dropped his mouth between her legs once more, laving her in hot, wet strokes until she was on the brink. No, she managed to gasp. Not yet. Not like that. Not without you. He understood. Jason moved up her body, his hands finding hers on either side of her head. His fingers linked with hers in the exact moment he slid forward, joining them in a slick stroke that filled her to perfection. Their eyes met, and she saw the same confused emotions on his face that she knew he was seeing in hers. It was too much. It was everything. Leah, he said, kissing her softly. My Leah. Her eyes widened in surprise at the unexpected tenderness in his voice. But before she could analyze it, he started to move, sending all rational thought out the window and centering every single fiber of her being to the throbbing spot between her legs, where he stretched and stroked her in exactly the right way as he pummeled in and out of her ready body. Jason's grip on her hands tightened, his breathing growing even more ragged, and she lifted one leg to wrap high across his back, creating the perfect angle for his pelvis to drag across her clit. Come for me, Red, he said against her neck. Come with me. It was all she needed. Leah cried out and arched up toward him, at the same moment he tensed and bucked above her, her needy, desperate fingers clutching at his as they rode their orgasms together. He collapsed on top of her, and Leah welcomed his weight, their fingers still linked as both gasped for air. Eventually, as her heartbeat finally slowed, Leah managed to open her eyes, staring blindly at the ceiling, relishing his warm breath against her neck, even as she tried not to freak out about what she was feeling. It was both everything she remembered and more. Somehow it was more, more intense than it had ever been, and somehow more important, too. Because it was goodbye? It had to be goodbye. Didn't it? Chapter 9 So are you going to tell me what the hell's got you so irritated this week, or am I going to have to guess? Jason glanced over to where his sister roamed around his studio, touching everything he'd asked her a million times to let alone. Kathleen was a nurse, and, as was the case more often than not when she stopped by, was still dressed in her magenta scrubs, which were not nearly baggy enough to hide her ever-increasing baby bump. The thought made him smile. He was going to be an uncle. You're going to get your fingerprints all over it, he grumbled as he saw her pick up one of the lenses he'd stupidly left out, even though he knew she was coming over. Kathleen rolled her eyes and set it down. See what I mean? Irritable. Do I come to your work and touch your shit? Well, no, but I work in a hospital, so that'd be highly creepy and I think illegal. He and Kathleen hadn't grown up together. They didn't have all those sibling squabbles and childish, don't-touch-my-stuff arguments as kids. Didn't matter, because they had them now. Great, he mumbled. So I'm being punished because I work from home. Jason had a two-bedroom apartment in Hoboken, a city in New Jersey just across the Hudson River from the west side of Manhattan. It wasn't a bad deal. The commute to the city was longer than some people liked, but he never minded. Plus, it was a hell of a lot more affordable than the city and enabled him to have enough space for a separate bedroom and a studio. In Manhattan, he'd be lucky to afford a place big enough to put his bed. What are you working on? Kathleen asked coming over and propping a hip on his desk as she glanced at his screen. He rubbed his hands over his face and gave up on getting any serious work done until after his sister left. Jason shifted in his spinning chair so that he could better face Kathleen. Pregnancy suited her, as did marriage in general. Her blue eyes were happy, her dark hair shiny in its high ponytail. They didn't look alike, not really. Just the same shared dark hair that a billion other people had but it still made him proud to know that this feisty, vibrant woman was related to him. Somehow she'd come out of the same shit-faced foster system that he had, but whereas he'd spent years being bitter, she'd managed to make the most of it, managed to be grateful for the strength it had afforded her. Then she'd gone a step beyond, 
found herself a guy who worshipped the ground she walked on and let him knock her up on their honeymoon. She'd done well for herself, seeking out her happiness when it didn't come directly to her, and her happiness made him happy. Kathleen pointed a finger at him. Oh no, not that face. Don't get dippy on me. He batted her hand aside, and she turned her attention back to the screen. Holy crap, that's the president. Former president, whatever. Jason shrugged. I told you I worked that wedding. Right, right. I think I was half asleep when you called to tell me. Last weekend, right? He nodded, rubbing a hand over the back of his neck. One week. It had been one week since he'd had the best sex of his life, with the only woman he'd ever cared about, only to wake up at 3 a.m., naked and alone. She hadn't even left a fucking note. She'd just been gone. You could call her, the devil on his shoulder prompted. You could be an adult and initiate an actual conversation. Right, he could call her. But just like last time, he didn't want to have to chase someone down. Just once, he wanted someone to care enough to stick around long enough to give him a fucking chance. Why should he go running after Leah when she'd been the one who'd left with no warning? Okay, scroll through. I want to see, Kathleen said, motioning with her hand and jerking his attention back to the present. I'd do it myself, but you'll just do that don't-touch-my-stuff tantrum again. Jason obeyed, obediently scrolling through the photos smiling as she pointed out a half-dozen faces that she recognized from the news. Wait, go back, Kathleen said, her eyes narrowing. Who's that? Jason did, and then tensed when he saw the picture his sister was pointing at. Leah. There was one of her about every fiftieth picture or so, when he hadn't been able to stop himself from capturing her smile. He'd removed them all before he sent the finished photos to the Prestons, of course but he wouldn't get rid of them. They were all he had left of her. He tried to scroll forward, but his sister swatted his hand away from the mouse. Hold on, I know her, but I feel like not from the news. I don't think she's in politics. Drop it, he snapped, his tone sharper than it usually was with her. Kathleen gave him a startled look. Hold up. Is she the reason you've had a stick up your ass all week? Did you sleep with her? He didn't respond. He would never lie to Kathleen, but he stopped short of actively confirming details about his sex life. So that's a yes then, she said in amusement. Could it be that the pretty redhead didn't call you back? That'd be a first, wouldn't it? No, actually, make that a second. There was that redhead from last year. Kathleen broke off, and Jason cursed as her eyes went wide as she put the pieces together. That's how I know her. That's the woman that came over and freaked out when I opened the door. Yeah, because you were fucking wearing my shirt, he exploded. Okay, she held up a finger. It is so not my fault that the stupid travel mug you lent me was booby-trapped so that I spilled coffee all over my dress. It was either your gross clothes or a first-degree burn or whatever. Jason pushed his chair back and stood up, locking his fingers behind his head and going to the window. Can we not talk about this? It's not exactly a good memory. Nope, we're talking about it, Kathleen said. What's going on? Why do you shut me down every time I ask about that morning? I can see how this woman might jump to the wrong conclusion, but didn't she chill out when you explained I was your sister? He said nothing, and Kathleen let out a low, exaggerated groan. Jason Adam Rhodes, you didn't tell her? She wouldn't let me, he snapped. I fucking chased her all the way down the street, but she was already on the path by the time I caught up. Well, it's a good thing we live in the age of phones, and email, and Facebook, and Twitter, and texting, he spun around. You think I didn't call? His sister crossed her arms and eyed him closely. How many times? Fuck. I don't know. Ten? She never picked up. And she just ignored all your voicemails? He ground his teeth, and Kathleen just shook her head. You moron! You gave up! You could have just fixed this with a simple text saying, Hey, false alarm, that was my little sis, but you let her believe I was one of your million flings. Why? He lifted a shoulder. 
She saw what she wanted to see. Kathleen stood up and crossed to him, her eyes annoyed. Sure, which was another woman in her boyfriend's home. Can you blame her for jumping to conclusions? He closed his eyes and ran a hand over his face. Why is it that I'm supposed to be okay with everyone's assumptions about me being for shit? Kathleen frowned. What are you talking about? He spun toward her, angry now. I'm talking about the fact that people have been deciding who I am without my consent from the day I came out of the womb. About the fact that every time there was a fight in kindergarten, they assumed it was the drug addict's kid. Every time someone's lunch money went missing, it was the foster kid. There wasn't a single girl in high school whose daddy would let her go to prom with me because I drove a beat-up car that I bought on my own. Fuck, even in the military, people got it in their heads that I was the loose cannon to keep an eye on. Kathleen's eyes had gone soft, and she rested a hand on his arm. He checked the urge to shake her off, but barely. It was more than he'd ever said out loud to anyone, and he felt uncomfortably exposed. I know you've had a crap time of it, his sister said gently, but you're so strong. You've never let it bother you. Yeah, well, this time it bothered me, he grumbled. Why? Kathleen pressed. Why with this woman did her lack of faith cut so deeply? This time he did shake his sister off as he circled, feeling like a caged animal. I don't know. I think you do. Damn it, Kathleen. Damn it, Jason, she shot back. He opened his mouth to roar at her, but instead he let his hands drop to his sides. He lifted his palms helplessly, only to let them drop once more. Because she mattered, okay? She mattered a hell of a lot, and I wanted her to just... believe. To trust. To love. Kathleen came to him and wrapped her arms around his waist, trapping his arms against his side. I know, big brother, I know. I want her to have trusted you, too. But to play devil's advocate... Did you ever give her any reason to believe that there wouldn't be a woman fresh out of your bed on a Sunday morning? What do you mean? Kathleen pulled back. I mean, did you ever tell her that you cared enough to stop your whole Playboy act? Did you ever tell her you loved her? I didn't say I... His sister held up a hand. Please, don't insult either one of us by denying how you feel about this woman. You have creepy pictures all over your computer screen. And come to think of it, you've barely gone out with a single woman since that whole fiasco last year. Jason shook his head, indicating the topic was closed. He hadn't had time to think about how he felt about what happened between him and Leah in the Hamptons. Hadn't had time to register the pain of realizing that she'd walked out on him again. And that he'd let her go without explaining. Again. He shoved the last thought aside. Just because Kathleen was determined to shove pesky thoughts into his head didn't mean he had to pay attention. I need to work, kid, he said, putting a hand on Kathleen's head and ruffling her hair. We'll discuss this later. Yeah, sure we will, she said with a snort. Okay, fine, work. I'll make us sandwiches and then I'm going home for a much overdue nap. Jason settled back at his computer trying to lose himself in his work, and succeeding mostly, save for the jolt he got every time Leah's red hair appeared on his screen. Did you ever tell her you loved her? He didn't love her. Hell, they'd only dated for two months. And yet it had only taken one weekend for everything to come rushing back. One fucking weekend, one night really, for him to realize... Shit. For him to realize that she was the only one he wanted. Jason made a fist and rammed it against the arm of his chair. His sister was right. He was a moron. Sure, Leah had jumped to conclusions, but it was the exact same conclusion every other woman would have made. Because he would have wanted them to. He'd spent his entire life making sure that women knew that he wasn't a one-woman kind of guy. It had been different with Leah. But how would she have known that? He sure as fuck hadn't told her. Jason slumped back against his chair and swore softly as he tried to sort everything out. 
He dimly heard noises from the kitchen as his sister made what was apparently the most complex sandwich on the planet. Heard a knock at the door and his sister's chipper, I've got it. He barely registered any of this until he heard Kathleen holler for him. Damn it, Jason, get your ass out here now. He was so deep in troubleshooting mode that it took him a second to register the urgency in his sister's voice, and he was out of his chair in a heartbeat. Only he moved too fast. His bad knee that was okay most of the time twisted, sending a shooting pain radiating down his leg. Fuck, he muttered as he half ran, half limped out into the hallway. What is it? You okay? Kathleen was staring at him wide-eyed. She pointed to the open doorway. Go. Now. He frowned. What? Go, she said, jumping a little in her urgency. Don't let her get away again. Her? Who was her? It hit him then. A sickening sense of deja vu. Her was Leah. Leah had come by. She'd wanted to see him. The surge of joy was snuffed out almost immediately by the realization of what Leah would have seen. Not only was it another woman opening the door all over again, it was the same woman. Only this time, she was clearly pregnant. Christ, Kathleen, he said as he lurched for the open doorway. Sure, sure, blame me again, his sister said happily. I won't even care, so long as you catch her this time. Jason was already out the door as his sister said all of this, but even as he took his first steps, he knew it was hopeless. He hadn't been able to catch her last time, and that was without his knee hurting like hell. And he sure as hell wasn't holding out hope that Leah would pause for even a moment and give him a damn chance. Chapter 10 Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. How stupid could one woman be in the span of one calendar year? Really stupid, apparently. Stupid enough to think that that night with Jason had meant as much to him as it had to her. Stupid enough to think that whatever unbreakable feeling she had for him might be mutual. Leah had never been much of a runner, but she was running now. She'd never spent much time on the Jersey side, being a Brooklyn girl herself. But in the time she and Jason had been doing whatever they were doing, she'd become familiar enough to make it to and from his place and the path station that took her back to New York. It was all too familiar, the painful jiggle of her boobs thanks to the quickened motions of her feet and corresponding lack of a supportive sports bra, the awkward slap, slap, slap of her flip-flops as she risked tripping with every lurching step, the gross, hiccuping sobs she was making. A woman had answered the door. Not just any woman. The woman. The same freaking woman. Granted, this time the brunette hadn't been half-naked, but still. For all of Jason's talk about how he didn't do relationships, he was certainly doing something with the pretty brunette. Seeing as how she was, you know, pregnant. With Jason's baby? This time she did trip, barely catching herself as her arms flailed wildly. Oh, God. Had he slept with her when he was going to be the father to that woman's baby? Leah started to run faster. People were staring, but she didn't care. It wasn't the first time there'd been a lover's spat of sorts in the tri-state area, and it wouldn't be the last. She didn't care about any of that. She cared about getting home and trying to figure out how to piece together her pride. She cared about her dignity and... Jason. Leah's pace slowed and then slowed some more as the thought hit her hard. She cared about Jason. As in all the way cared about him. She loved him. She loved him, and she dug deep to find the courage to come here today, to tell him that she wanted more than a fling, that she wanted him. And yet, she was running? Again. Without so much as seeing him or giving him the chance to explain. That wasn't love. It was immature cowardice. Leah stopped as a surge of self-loathing overtook her. What was she doing? The man she knew deserved better than this. The man she loved deserved a chance, at least to explain. And she deserved to hear whatever he had to say, even if it ripped her heart out. Leah closed her eyes, 
and took a deep breath before forcing herself to pivot on her heel. This was about to suck. Forcing herself to walk back to his house, to somehow look him in the eye and apologize for running again. She opened her eyes as she took a resolute step forward, only to skid to a halt once again. Leah blinked. Blinked again. Surely she was imagining things. Surely she wasn't seeing Jason running. No, hobbling toward her. Her heart squeezed as she realized that he was limping. She knew that most of the time his knee didn't give him much trouble, but he was always deliberate in the way he moved, careful not to make any sudden movement that could twist it. She also knew that when he did aggravate it, it hurt like hell. And yet here he was, coming after her. Stop, she yelled. Jason, stop. He didn't stop, and Leah took off toward him. Stop, she said again. She got close enough to see his face and flinched when she saw the anger there. Still, she forced herself forward with her awkward boob-jiggling flip-flop run. She deserved his anger. They collided into each other, her gasping for air a bit more than him, but their grip on each other was equally frantic. Your knee, she said, just as he yelled, What the hell, Red? His face was angry as his hand closed on her elbow, pulling her so close she had no choice but to look into his glowering expression. I wouldn't have to be running at all if you didn't go scampering off like a damned jackrabbit every time my sister comes over to see me. I don't... Leah broke off, and she felt the blood drain from her face. She'd thought he might have an explanation. She'd hoped it would be a good one. That would mean there might be some hope for them. But never in her wildest dreams had she imagined that he'd have an explanation that made her feel so utterly, horribly foolish. Your sister, she parroted back. He swallowed and nodded. Kathleen. She pulled back and lifted the heels of her hands to her temples. Oh my God, that was your sister a year ago? He rolled his eyes. Yes, that's how sibling relationships work, Red. Sort of a lifetime deal. Why didn't you tell me, she said, not caring that people were really starting to stare now. He closed his eyes before opening them and meeting her gaze. I should have. I should have, and I know that. But my entire life I've had to beg people to believe in me, Red. And I wanted so damn badly for you to want me enough to hear me out. The words sounded like they were ripped from the deepest part of his chest, and Leah's own heart twisted in response. She took a little step forward, half terrified she was misunderstanding him, that he'd wanted her then and now. What do you mean nobody believed in you? He didn't answer. His eyes came back to hers, dark and unreadable, wary. Why did you come here today, Leah? She pressed her lips together, not wanting to have to do this here, not like this, when he was so mad at her and she at him, and rightfully so on all sides. They'd both acted like 14-year-olds, not rational 30-something adults. And yet, was there anything really rational about love? about the way that she wanted to fight for him, even though she wasn't at all sure what he wanted from her, if anything. She licked a salty tear from the corner of her mouth and lifted her chin. It was time to be brave. I came here to tell you something, she said, her voice a little too loud. Oh, Lord, this was awkward. To tell me what? She swallowed and took a step forward. To tell you, um... To tell you why I switched to cinnamon toothpaste, she said, the sentence coming out in a rush. Okay, not what she'd meant to say, but at least he wasn't moving away. His eyes narrowed. Yeah? Why's that? Leah's eyes locked on his. Because it reminded me of you. Because even as I was dodging your calls, even as it was killing me to think of you with another woman, I missed you. Even when I was hating you, I was... She broke off, and Jason stepped closer, cupping her face as he searched her eyes urgently. You were what, Leah? Leah squeezed her eyes shut and took the plunge. Loving you. I loved you back then, and some foolish little part of me loved you this whole past year, even when the only thing that connected me to you was my freaking toothpaste. And then I saw you again, and I just... I knew... 
knew that I had to tell you, even if you'd tell me that you're still on the bachelor for life path and... Jason's mouth closed over hers, his kiss rough and hungry. My beautiful idiot, he murmured when he pulled back. Her brain was still reeling from the unexpected kiss, and she blinked at him in confusion. What? He kissed her again, quick and hard to shut her up. Quiet. My turn. I chased you that day, did you know that? I ran my heart out for you, Red, but you were already on the train. And then I called and called, needing to hear your voice and explain, but you didn't pick up. When you decided I wasn't worth picking up for, you broke me a little. She swallowed, wanting to make him stop, and yet knowing that they needed to do this to move forward. He let out a slow breath, resting his forehead on hers for a moment before forcing himself to continue. When I told you nobody believed in me, I meant nobody. Not until my sister showed up unexpectedly. I've always been everyone's worst-case scenario, and I thought I was over that. But then you happened, and you mattered. You mattered so damn much, and Jason swallowed. Fuck, I love you. I didn't know it back then. I didn't know what I was feeling, and I treated you, us, carelessly. But I know it now, Red, and I swear to God, I am not letting you go ever again. I will camp outside your apartment. I'll follow you to every doctor's appointment. And if you even think about going on a date with someone else, I will happily pull a fire alarm at the restaurant. I won't stop. I won't stop chasing you, and I sure as hell won't stop loving you. Leah threw herself at him. Right there in the middle of the street, she launched herself at Jason, wrapping her arms around him as she buried her face in his neck. I'm sorry for not believing in you. You're the best man I know, and I should have trusted that. He cupped the back of her head and held her close. Let's start over. Start fresh. Except this time we can cut straight to the good stuff. He leaned down to her ear and nipped it lightly. Since I already know how to play your body like a fiddle he murmured. She laughed. And I yours. Too true. Jason pulled back, smiling down at her as he held out a hand, which she happily took. Come home with me. Come meet my sister and reassure her that you won't go running every time you see her. And then you can talk to her belly and get to know the little critter who I have every intention of making your niece or nephew someday very soon. Leah skidded to a halt. Mr. Rhodes, are you telling me you believe in happily ever after? Jason hooked an arm around her neck and pulled her close, kissing her head. From this day forward, I do, Red. I absolutely do. This concludes From This Day Forward by Lauren Lane, narrated by Vanessa Daniels. Copyright 2016 by LL Book Company. This unabridged audiobook is published by arrangement with Simon & Schuster Incorporated and was produced in the year 2016 by Tantor Media Incorporated, a division of recorded books, which holds the copyright there too. Please visit Tantor.com for more information on our growing library of unabridged audiobooks and to take advantage of special offers. Audible hopes you have enjoyed this program.